Greetings fellow captains and welcome back to another episode of World of Warships with the Hive Hound and today, a bit late I know, but we are eventually getting round to taking a look at the premium tier 6 pot lava. I'm probably butchering that let's be honest. Uh, but well that's the closest I'm getting to uh, pronouncing it correct so it's the new tier 6 premium available and uh, we're gonna have a quick look at the commander setup and how I've built the ship so we have Mikhail Kid Kedrov rank 16 uh, legendary one uh, primarily because of his main perk the turret traverse but we have decided not to go for brawler and go for one, not one for nuisance due to our limited amount of uh, repair parties. Uh, crisscross to approve the turret traverse of our guns. Could have gone for porcupine, but we decided not to in this instance. Uh, collective labor to give us that extra damage control charge because the Russian battleships are actually limited. They're the only ships at the moment who have a limited amount of, uh, of uh, damage control parties and uh, we've decided to uh, skip on the other two although volunteer might be a good way but with that reduced duration and we actually decided to sw switch here because well master mechanic is actually a really good perk for the Russian ships having that additional two uh, repair parties uh, so not having the damage control that will allow us to mitigate a bit more of the fire or flooding damage we receive by by basically repairing through it so Charles Madden again turret traverse is really important on these ships because it's quite slow and Cunningham to improve the precision of our main guns so we're gonna have a look at our upgrades and again, the main turret, <laughs> main turret mod two because turret traverse is absolutely awful on these ships. Uh, we've gone for propulsion mod in our second slot. We could have gone for steering gear mod because the turning radius and rudder shift time is awful on this ship. But propulsion mod gives us a bit more flexibility. And the only third perk is target acquisition anyway. So we have 59,000 hit points, which isn't a particularly large amount for a uh, tier 6 battleship, uh, but it does have better armor than the Synop at 16 to 425 millimeters and 38% torpedo damage reduction. Our main batteries fire just shy of 16 kilometers. And one thing to note, our chances of setting fire, 41%. Uh, that makes it almost equal to, not quite, but almost equal to the uh, the Nelson and 1, 000, uh, 11,250 main damage with its AP shells. Uh, here we go, <laughs> the, the, the manoeuvrability, 1,000 metres turn in circle radius, a 14.8 rudder shift time, but it is quite quick at 27 knots. And... So, a little rundown, so sure shot, so basically the shells have better arcs, uh, it makes the ship easier to hit on target. Superior AP pen, but it does, however, have the modest guns. So, the Pot Lava was a Type B uh, class battleship uh, that was essentially designed to, basically a battle cruiser, to hunt, uh, to hunt other cruisers and to take on the Sharn Horse class of uh, battleships so we're going to jump into the uh, the game here uh, so we have a brand new ship and the brand new grease map all at the same time so uh, let's hope this is I've had quite a few games in it and I've not enjoyed the Russian battleships but I really have been enjoying the uh, Poltava or pot lava <laughs> I think we should just call it the lava it sort of fit in with its uh, high explosive uh, shell chance now if you've seen me on my live streams you'll know in general i'm a very aggressive player but one thing particularly when in battleships and i need to do this more often in general myself is don't make any rash decisions i put myself up to half speed and i'm paying attention to the map i'm having a look around to see what my team is doing and i don't know why this kutcher's off has dropped his smoke but well why not why we might as well take advantage of that because 
it's right there. It's a couple of degrees <laughs> change of course for us. And this will give us a, a bit more time to establish what exactly is going on in the map. So the destroyers both appear to be heading towards B. Uh, but the Kutchazov is pushing forward and I don't know which battleship it is off the top of my head. Uh, but we have a battleship pushing forward with us here as well. And a, uh, a wild Kutchazov appears. So... Uh, Obviously, no battleship player likes being set on fire constantly, so we are most certainly going to focus on getting him. And, alright, we fired a salvo of uh, Heichi, and we got one fire and scored about 5,000 damage. Kutchizov has burnt his repair kit straight away, as uh, you can see the enemy team have started capturing B, so we can assume safely one of their destroyers is over there. And obviously destroyers are a bit of a pain. And there's our second destroyer as we're trying to blind fire that Kutcher's off in his smoke. We get a couple of hits, uh, but they're just over pens. And that is, even though it's got low caliber guns, that is something you're definitely going to find with the uh, pulse. With the lava is, uh, is that it will over pen uh, cruisers. And it'll over pen cruisers a lot. So Kutch's off has reappeared. He looks like he just took a citadel from someone. And uh, I was expecting him to start moving, but nope. Uh, he sat completely still. And there we go, citadel. And we take out the uh, Kutch's off nice and early in the game. So uh, to be honest, we're going to try firing at the mass. We just lost a uh, cruiser. There are torpedoes heading in for the mass. The mass disappears but we st it's a destroyer to pain. We're going to track him. He just got hit by a torpedo so uh, we are going to fire in his general direction and hopefully get something but unfortunately not and that mass is uh, well th that mass is dead. He's now dead so he's gone. Uh, he died to flooding from the torpedo. Now the uh, other DD was spotted in B, so I'm quite ca happy and quite comfortable now to really start pushing this flank and maybe go to uh, to capture the uh, the flag. As you can see, the enemy are bunched up in the middle. We're both sides of them as we score a pretty juicy hit on that Amagi. And, uh, ooh, I'm sure I just hear torpedo sounds then. But, uh, yeah, we're gonna f we're gonna f we're gonna push forward. Uh, we can see our team's not pushing forward, but because the enemy team seems to be concentrating on our left flank, I feel happy to uh, feel happy to push down. Now I think about shooting at the Amagi, but I'm like he's gonna die. There's no point. So we're gonna hold our shots because uh, we were gonna aim for the Sinop or the cruiser that also appeared. Uh, but the uh, the Amagi burns out, so we leave uh, we leave him to it. Leave our teammate pick up the kill. And uh, we score quite another juicy hit at range uh, with uh, with the with the lava again on that Sinop. We take a really nasty hit from the enemy Colorado, but don't worry about it. <laughs> we will get him back for sure. We're going to make him pay for that. So I start pushing into the cap, and that's when uh, we get set on fire by the enemy Atigo. Uh, Citadel, and as you can see, <laughs> a bunch of over penetration. So one one shell penetrated straight through his Citadel. Everything else blew through his ship like a knife through hot butter, hot butter lava. Sorry about the puns, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but uh, so we're going to wait until uh, until this article is dead before uh, before using our repair party. And dump, there we go, another Citadel. Good night. We uh, burn our uh, our damage control, uh, damage control party, and uh, this is when uh, this is when we start tussling with the Colorado. Now, granted, this ship is better the closer you get, but I don't want to be turning and giving my broadside to the Colorado. So we have to flank away. We take minimum damage from his. Uh, his shells and whoop there we go we've got two pens and found his citadel 
Aha! How'd you like that, Colorado? <laughs> Revenge. Uh, as you can see, our team, this is really properly getting into crossfire territory now. Our team have pushed through A and that they're closing in. Basically, the enemy, the enemy are completely surrounded and uh, we seem to have found the attention of both the Colorado and now the Sean Horse. So we're going to turn back in. Uh, we've got three out of the four caps, so I don't really need to get this cap. But you never know. Like, stranger things have happened. And there we go. Colorado is down. And that is our, uh, is that our third kill of the match. But, yeah, like I said, you never know what can happen. We've all seen those amazing videos where someone's gone on a rampage and uh, killed the enemy team. Hell, the community video from yesterday, do remote very, very nearly uh, got a, uh, got, you know, you pulled one back from the brink, very similar to this. So anything I can do to extend, anything you can do to increase the chances of getting that win, you should definitely be looking at doing so uh, I seem to solely have the focus of the Sean Host, and in all fairness, the Sean Host is my favourite tier six uh, ship. Full stop. Absolutely love it. It's so flexible. Such a good machine. So I really want to see how I could fare up against it. And the Russian ships are quite tanky, and they don't have a massive amount of superstructure to really cause damage to. So uh, we're quite happy. I, I wanted this engagement. All right, granted, I'd like to have a bit more health to start off with, but uh, but I wanted to, I wanted to test it out. I wanted to see who would win out of uh, out of these two ships. And oh, there we go. Well, that didn't cause any damage, unfortunately. He's aiming at us. We're nicely angled. We take minor damage. Um, minor damage, consider it basically inconvenient at this point. Uh, our next salvo does absolutely nothing, and this is where we start to turn because obviously the Sean Host is closing in, and the Sean Host does, in fact, have torpedoes. Uh, and there we go, we get the Confederate medal, which I found this bit a little bizarre. Let me know if anyone else has seen this before. I haven't got high caliber. I've got Confederate, and I'm sure isn't Confederate do like 30% of the damage to six of the enemy ships? Yeah, I, I've never seen a Confederate before, high caliber. But, uh, you know, we'll take it. We'll take some mild damage back in return from the Colorado, and then we get our high caliber as we hit 128,000. And we're doing a pretty good job of tanking the damage. And we're just lining up the final kill shot, but unfortunately, our friendly teammate picks up the kill. So, yes, the tier 6 pot lava, 128,000, first blood, high caliber, and confederate. So I hope you all enjoyed. I uh, hope you, uh, hope you uh, appreciated the, uh, the commander and ship build, and, uh, and enjoyed my thoughts on the pot lava. So... To sort of recap, uh, it's a very tanky ship, has amazing, uh, and, and I really mean amazing, high explosive fire chance. Uh, it's very tanky. Yes, you can citadel heavily armoured ships such as the Colorado as well. And uh, we got just shy of 3,000 base XP in a down-tiered match. Uh, so... Uh, is it worth it? Well, th that's entirely up to you guys. Everyone's got their own different budgets and their their own their own val you know ideas of the value of money. But it is a ship that I thoroughly enjoyed, and I, it's not going to be something that's just going to sit in my port. I will definitely be playing the uh, the lava a bit more over the coming months. So thank you very much for sticking with us, and until next time, take care.